Not Great Parents podcast. I am still Not Great Parent Molly, and yep. this is still Not Great Parent Nathan. So not new year, new you. Not new new year, same old you. It's a new year, still not great. <laughs> still not great. And okay with that, still. Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm, I'm still doing doing good at that. I think we agreed this year as part of, this is our New Year's resolution on this podcast. We're going to get through the opening not great part real quick. So We're Molly, real quick, it up. what does it mean to be a not great All parent? right. The world defines greatness for us as all, having all the things, all the experiences, all the money, all the success, all the skills, all the everything. And we know that God defines a life for us in goodness. And mm. so we as parents don't want to be great. We want to push our family and guide our family towards the goodness that God has to offer rather than the greatness that the world does. Too short? Too no, long. that was good. I think that's, well, you know if you ask me, <laughs> Nathan, should we expound upon that? My answer is going to be yes, yes, no matter what it is. But well, I think that was good. I think people get it. Yep, yeah, you guys got it. We don't want to be great. We're never going to sit here and say we actually are great. And if we are, then we uh, need to listen to our own podcast a little yeah. bit more. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you go, you can go on our YouTube page or if you subscribe on our podcast, all of that stuff is on our feed. If there's anything we reference throughout going forward that you go, what are they talking about? You yes. might be able to find it in a previous episode. Or you can just send us a note. We have a link in the Yeah, that's right. The, we have a link in the show notes. You can just send us a note. Tell us you're out there. We do want to know who's Absolutely. listening. We want to hear from you guys. So Send us that uh, if you just have a question about what are you talking about when we're clearly referring to something from June of last year. But we are trying to get more practical going forward for families, less conceptual. Right. My nature, as we did a whole thing as a, <laughs> a staff uh, last summer where we looked at, we called it, it's called thinking wavelengths. Oh, and right. you, you look at where you fit and I fit on almost, I think I was the farthest you to the right. You were the farthest of, on concept of and, conceptual and ideas thinking. And what if we. <laughs> yes. And very. The brainstormer. Very low on practicality. And uh -huh. so, like, to the point of, like, I'll come to my wife regularly and be like, hey, I feel really convicted. And one time she just was like, so what are we going to have to do now? Like, make our own shoes? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, because I live very much on the conceptual yes. world, and and it takes effort for me to get very practical. You I'm live a little further, more in the middle. I'm in the middle, yes. So, so you can do a little bit of both. I can do a little bit of a both. Sometimes I can be very, you know, conceptual and things like that, and then I get to a point where I go, okay, I need some steps. That's right. Okay, I need some steps. So we feel like maybe that's where you we're gonna guys be might be, in. and so yeah. we're going to lean into that a little bit because we've talked for a long time about what it means to not be great. So let's talk about how to get there. Let's talk about how to get to these patterns and rhythms of goodness in your family. Right. So to start, we're going to name this Family Matters. Yes. And uh, in case <laughs> in case you are like me and immediately when you heard Molly just dropped her <laughs> Drop phone, phone and it like slapped me very hard <laughs> on the knee. Sorry. It was, it was, it was well, aggressive. It was aggressive. It didn't just drop it like through it. <laughs> it threw it. It's threw it itself <laughs> at me. Uh, but if you're like me when you hear family matters, and we had a long discussion about this, and you immediately start hearing that. We had a long discussion of multiple people making these sounds. <laughs> of the sounds of the Family Matters theme song. The problem is, that is the opening piano riff to the Family Matters theme song. But... I I started singing from that riff <laughs> the full house. the full house theme song of uh oh now I've forgotten that one too. oh I've, whatever happened to yes. predictability and I started thinking of Mr Belvedere yes. <laughs> so, so we're all over the place anyway we are focusing on family matters yes because in particular what we want to focus on really throughout the rest of this year is and we've said this the whole time that really it is the family. Um, in particular, parents in the life of a child, right, uh, are are the primary place where discipleship happens. And we're going to talk about this for those of you who are listening and are like, well, then what does the church do? It right. actually all kind of blends together. Right. But in particular, families, parents are the ones who have the most time. If you just look at sheer amount of time with their children, mm -hmm. parents have the most. And so we wanted to start looking at what would it look like to structure your family life in such a way so that what is happening is discipleship to Jesus mm -hmm. and not discipleship, as we say, to greatness. Right. Because it's easy to fall into discipleship to greatness. Yeah. It's the, it's the as we said at the end of the last uh, year, two weeks ago, 
<laughs> that long time ago. And we were talking about that the world, the culture mm -hmm. has a mold that it wants to put onto each one of us. And so it is easier to just fit into the mold that exists, no matter how much you're, you know, you're a, I'm not a sheeple person. Yes. Well, I mean, you think of go with the flow, blend yes. in the crowd, all those different yes. things. We, we as a culture say that's the way to be in some ways. That's right. And, and it's not to say, Hey, cause there's this, there's actually this other mold. Uh, I will call this the uh, dead poet society. Oh, captain, my captain mold. <laughs> oh my God. You know what I'm talking about? This is an old, uh, old reference, but there is nothing, there is nothing more conformist mm -hmm. than saying you're a non-conformist. Oh yes. <laughs> that movie is the most conformist movie. It totally is. That movie is a movie about, you know, comes in first days, ripping pages out of the textbook, you know, carpe diem, uh, yes. don't be like everyone else. And then of course, what happens at the end of the movie? Mm -hmm. One person stands up and says, oh, captain, my captain. And, and so does all. the rest yeah. of the people. They drop like flies, don't they? They conform to that non-conformist. Yeah. We as a society love the idea that we are non-conformist. Non-conformists are a form of conformists themselves. <laughs> it's the idea that somehow I have a, I need to make up my mind for myself. And as Stanley Hauerwas, uh, who's a professor that I love, uh, he's at Duke University, he says the first job of every professor is to convince their students you don't have a mind worth making up. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that you're just, you don't have a mind worth making. Why are you making them? Am I trying to make your mind up? That's true. That's the world that we live in is you should make up your own mind. We're not saying take off the mold and just live loosey-goosey. Mm -hmm. We're saying put on the Jesus mold. Right, which right. is clearly outlined for us. And yeah, and it looks different in every generation. It looks different in every culture, right? But the overall shape of the life of Jesus is the same. To start with what is the mold that most people are living in we call it greatness um, but i think there's this idea of what most people think the point of the family is right the, the point of the, the family job is, of the parent or the job of the parent is to help my kid become all they can be become all they can be right find their thing find their thing and we did talk about finding your thing a lot last year and we mm -hmm. said ultimately we want our child's thing to be jesus right but that is what parents often believe is I've got to, my job is to help my child discover mm -hmm. who they are mm -hmm. and what greatness they are going to be. Yeah, I think, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go real brief on this. Go, go for it. To not get too conceptual. I'll throw my phone at you when I'm ready for you to move on. <laughs> I think part of the reason this happens is, is because as we become more individualistic, mm -hmm. meaning what we mean by that is what most people think is, I identify as me, mm -hmm. not as we. What I mean is there are cultures, and you've seen this, I identify myself as the people I belong to, right? Mm -hmm. Even as far as uh, people who have the last name Robinson, right? Yeah. Like your name is, I'm the son of Robin, right? right? That you have this last name. I belong to this group of people. Right, and you see that, you know, in, I heard you saying the other day, you watched Game of Thrones, right? So if mm -hmm. you've seen Game of Thrones fantasy things, they're often you know, Nathan, son of so-and-so, first in the line of so-and-so. They yes. have these long, that it's all tying me to a people, right? Right. That's still very much it, what, the way it is in Arab cultures now, mm -hmm. um, that there are places in Africa that are the same way. Um, a lot of Latin American, South American still cultures are. Mm -hmm. are kind of in this almost like bleeding edge point where they're kind of in between. America is a hyper-individualistic culture where we're like, I don't want anything that weighs me down, mm -hmm. right? Even even marriage, what do we call our spouse? Ball and chain, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's, yes, it's you true. weigh me down. You, you're, you're, you're not letting me spread my wings and right. fly, right? right? Part of the reason that we focus so much on our giftings and our right. talents, a uh, part of it is there's a capitalistic side, which is I got to make money. I got to make money, yep. And, I, I got to have a skill. In order to make that money, I got to have a skill. I got to be successful. I got to have all these talents. I got to stand out. That's right. So that people will be drawn to me for my successes. Absolutely. The other part of it, I think, is there's an identity side of it. There's a, this makes me me. Mm -hmm. This gives my life meaning and purpose, right? And so we live in a world, because we're so individualistic, we live in a world that primarily the majority of people we interact with are strangers to us. Oh, par. Which is a kind of, it's not bizarre to me. It's bizarre when I started, 
I think producer Charlie just kicked the table. Or he but, fell asleep, maybe. And maybe, maybe he was like, this is getting too conceptual. That's your sign. <laughs> That's Charlie throwing things Keep at me, going. too conceptual. <laughs> So, but I think there was a period of time in certainly in small town culture where you would go to the grocery store and you knew five, six, seven people mm -hmm. and, and that was the way it was. So when I met someone new, you mm -hmm. know, and I started talking to them, I could say, oh, I'm so-and-so's kid, right? Or I yeah. used to work There's for Mr. So-and-so. There. There's identity within those people. But now what happens is, Let's bring it more practical. I'm at Christmas in Coweta and I'm walking with people I don't know. They're strangers right. to me. And we're, you know, they're, they're picking up gifts, gifts for people in the community for their kids. Mm -hmm. And so what do I do? I say, what are your kids into? Right. Because I, I just don't know what else to talk to you about. I've never, I've never met you. I don't know anything about you. I know your name and you're standing here. Do they and play I know sports? You're, and I know you're here to get gifts for children. Right. So let's have a conversation. But what do you talk about? So now I have to talk about what's your thing. Now here's what's really embarrassing. Then they say to me, well, what are your kids into? And Did then you I, say Jesus? No. <laughs> Come on. No. My kids are into Jesus. <laughs> right? Good luck with football. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. How football going to get well, you into not, heaven? I mean, it's not exactly the most, the biggest draw. <laughs> right. But I think this is where people feel is it's almost like I want my kid to have an identity. Mm -hmm. You know, my girls regularly say to me, you know, what's my gift? What's oh, my yes. talent? What's my mm -hmm. skill? What am I good at? Right, because they watch these shows and every kid has some hidden secret, either superpower right. or some, you know, they're a singer and right. no one ever knew they were singers. Or, and when you talk about kids often in a family, you'll say, oh, she's the one into music or he's the yes. one into sports. Yes. You know, I, I do that with my own two children. I've got one that's really into sports and I've got one that's really into everything, but not sports. That's right. <laughs> everything but sports, right? Yeah. yeah, I was that kid. I was like, eh. Although he has been playing basketball and I'm going to make you come watch one of his games because it is so cute that sounds he is cute. literally you know he's got a little area he's got a block you know yes. stay in and defend and he's standing there and he waves his arms around in the air and he's smiling at the people but right in front of him the whole time the whole time molly he's never gonna be a successful basketball player if he keeps smiling. it's so great <laughs> and i love it there's... i'll tell you there's another reason he's not gonna be a successful oh, there's basketball a lot player. Of reasons, but he's just so happy not a very tall guy <laughs> not a tall guy <laughs> And then when he does get the ball, like, I think they have him in the, the point guard position sometimes. Yeah. He's that he's standing there dribbling the ball. And I literally mean he is standing there he dribbling the ball. And he's dribble. smiling. And the coach is sitting there being like, come this way. Come right. on. The whole time he's just smiling away and someone comes over and rips the ball out of his hands. And then he yes. goes back to his defending and smiling again. Anyway, you'll have to come watch it because it's benefit, definitely good. The <laughs> benefit, so I think that's good. So let, once again, let's get really practical. The way that that goes for most people is if you have a kid and they're very talented or they mm -hmm. show a little bit of promise, mm -hmm. right? Or even if they're not doing well, eventually another parent will come and go, hey, if they're really into this, that if you want to help them, yes. you should get you should you should talk to this tutor. You mm -hmm. should talk to this, you know, I, I don't know because I even though I love NBA. Uh, I did not play a ton of basketball, but my brother was really into sports. So I know, you know, they need a batting coach because right. you don't just yes. need your coach. You need a batting coach. And you a need a pitching coach. coach. You need, you know, all these different things. You need a weight training guy. You need someone to help you do all these different things. Because if you want to help your kid, you got to help them develop this skill because they will not be competitive. Mm -hmm. And we're almost even using, and I know competitive also exists in sports. So I'm not saying that. But that language of you want them to be competitive in this market, oh, yeah. that is corporate capitalistic language of mm -hmm. if you want to be able to monetize what they are doing. You have to be competitive. They have to they have to have a leg up on someone else. Mm -hmm. They have to be ahead. They have to get ahead. And so there's a lot of this language we use. And we think the job of the family is I got to maximize my kid's potential. Mm -hmm. Because what would be the worst possible thing is if I had a kid who had tons of potential. Yeah, and, and then they, I squashed it as a parent. Yes, because of my laziness or because I went to do something else. You right. know, I was neglectful of them. I, I thought I invested in something else for them. What if my kid was supposed to be the next, you know, LeBron, LeBron James. James? What if, hey, look, <laughs> hey, there yeah. you go. What if what? Jasper is the next LeBron he might be, James? He might be going to have to grow. <laughs> there you go. But anyway, so yes, I have, but I I mean, have all the things. What if, what if? That is the case, but we as parents feel like if we don't, or the world tells us, so to speak, that if we don't develop them, we are going to have a op missed opportunity, wasted mm. opportunity with our child, which is like 
really kind of not what you want to hear as a parent. Well, no, it turns your child, and we don't see it this way, but we've turned our child into products that we produce. Mm -hmm. Something we produce into the world that, look at what I did, and when they go and accept the Academy Award, or they, you know, they uh -huh. go and do this, they're going to say- Their participation trophy. <laughs> participation. Their Academy <laughs> Award for participation. Exactly. He showed up on set every day. Because his mom made him go. <laughs> his mom made him be there. <laughs> you know. But when you when you accept the award, right, when they write the biography yeah. of this great person at the end of their life, you know, or not even that, when they get older and and I look back on it, I'll say, oh, my kid did all these wonders, right? Um, oh, look at all the things that they were able to accomplish during their time. And what we are wanting to propose is maybe the reason God puts us into families is not for individual personal development. Mm -mm. But maybe the reason we exist within families is because the family points to something other than itself. Mm -hmm. That the family is a uh, almost a tool, a shaping tool <coughs> to prepare me for something different. Right. That it's a model. Mm. Or it can be for me. Yeah. Or, or for our children. I mean, the husband and wife are... Yes. Bride, and they are you know they are turned towards yes. Jesus and then they you know are entrusted with children and mm -hmm. that expands mm -hmm. and then that again our, we God wants us to point toward him and move mm -hmm. towards that goodness and then beyond that it's our church body and our community mm -hmm. and again mm -hmm. same thing so it's another I don't call it step, but it, it is the fam being in a family is to prepare us for the next thing. All right, so we know that the family is a model of the church, right? Yeah, I think when you look at, you've already kind of given this example, but I believe it's in Ephesians, Paul says that the love, that the relationship between a husband and a wife, mm -hmm. right, is this mysterious model. The reason that God created marriage of a husband and a wife would be this model of the way that Christ lays down his life for the church. Mm -hmm. That that's the point is, we are the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Jesus lays down his life for us. We are brought together into this union of committed love for one another, right? Mutual mm -hmm. submission. We're trying to work things out together. Children are then a byproduct of that marriage, right? Right, And then therefore, the, the, the family unit becomes a way for children in particular to begin to experience what does love Within. in a community centered around love. Mm -hmm. Centered around, and, and in our case, centered around God. Well, yes, it if it's a Christian marriage, love. Christian home, it, it's all yes. centered around the love of God. But what does it look like to exist in a community centered around love? Because there are, there are no other communities in our world outside of family and church that are solely centered around love. You. Go into work and say, hey, I've had a really uh, bad week, so I did none of the work I was supposed to do, but I just talked to my coworkers and we all felt family. good. My work family. You're not a work family because mm -hmm. if you don't produce nothing, you're yes. gone, I man. Mean, even we work together and I wouldn't say we're a work family. I would say we're yes. a family for different reasons, right? Yes, I think the because interesting thing Jesus. is, <laughs> yes, I would say what's interesting about our situation being in that we work at a church is we exist simultaneously as co-workers. Mm -hmm. So there's a line, mm -hmm. right, that is, hey, this is the line that that I I need you to get this stuff done. Yes, we have this that over here. This needs to get done, right? But then there's also times where we we take a break from that relationship mm -hmm. and say, hey, I just want to check in on you personally. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, and not in the way, I was in business management, you lived I in lived the corporate in the world, world for a long, for a long time. time. The reason that you're, as a manager, are supposed to check on your employees is not because you care about because them. Because you don't want their productivity to slow down. Yes, the number one reason they tell you, hey, it's important. All the stuff of like servant leadership mm -hmm. that was really big in the 90s, right? And I learned it in college a lot. And I'd go, man, this sounds a lot like, they would take Christian language yes. and they would tell you the reason you serve your employees is to increase their productivity. Right. None of it was because there's someone made in the image of God deserving to be loved and Jesus served you and did all these yeah. things. There are no communities outside the family mm -hmm. and outside the church that are not just built around, hey, we're going to love one another. Right. We're just we're just here. And the whole purpose is I need people to practice loving mm -hmm. because I can't just, I, I can say in my head I love someone, but unless I get 
practical about well, we always, it. And we always hear, love is not a feeling, it's action. That's right. So as you've said, the, 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 the family is meant to be this model for our children. I'm talking about from our children's perspective. They're supposed to experience what unconditional love and mm-hmm. acceptance looks like within the church. I mean, within the family, right. so that one day that becomes- they will seek that in a larger family, which is the, the church. family of the church. Yes. And we've talked a lot in previous episodes, so you can go listen to them about why it is that the church is the primary family for believers. Right. But we wanted to talk about in this, how ultimately the way we go about doing that is through the time we spend together. Yeah. Right? I mean, we time is huge, right? Yeah. So you can't have relationships with people without time. That's right. Them. I mean, you just can't. You maybe you have some connection or whatever, but you know, we say Isn't that the phrase that people always say is connection. love is spelled T I M E? Oh, I've never heard You've that. You've never heard that. I, I can't remember. That's some it's, that's that some like, psycho that's some like feel good psychology thing, but, but I've heard true. that before. I, no, it's actually good. Is <laughs> love is spelled T I M E that Yeah. You know, I, I, I choose sh- to test but my time, because in this world, we believe our time is so valuable. Well, our time is money. Right. Time is money. Time, time is Time spent, time wasted. Yes. We use financial terms because yes. we love money. We love it. And I know we don't have the love of money because that's evil, but we love money. Yes. <laughs> and so we, we call everything money. Yes, I, yes exactly. That's You're why so I, money. <laughs> my kid says that. So no, funny. really? You're so money. That's that shot's money. so money. That's money. That's money <laughs> right like, there. Whatever. We love money, but we don't but love money. The, that's too great. <laughs> but the idea of time being a huge resource, right? That's right. A, a, an incredible resource that we have. What do we do with that time? And how mm-hmm. do you have relationships with people when you don't spend time to the, with them? And the truth is you don't. Mm-hmm. If you don't spend time talking to Jesus or mm-hmm. living in his word mm-hmm. or things like that, you won't have a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. It is not any different mm-hmm. with your family. So here we go again with the here it's between God and I, and now I've got this family I need to be spending time with each yeah. other, and then we're going to you know, trickle that out to church community, but it is time is essential. And I think in particular, this is the part that we want to kind of shift, because I don't think anyone listening disagrees with anything we just said. I think that everyone gets it. If you love someone, you got to spend time with them, you got to X, Y, Z. I think the hard part that we are going to make the shift for is we are talking about your family as a whole being together, not mom is with this kid, dad right. is with this kid. And, and we've some there's some tie with everybody in the family has been connected to somebody else in the family. We are not saying that. <laughs> We're saying there is an important piece of of we as a family care about each other because we are a family. And not for the purpose, and this is the part that I think is difficult for me with four children in my home, not for the purpose so that when my daughters grow up, they all want to spend time with one another. I hope they do. I hope when they're adults, even after I'm dead and gone, they still love each other and want to get together for holidays. That may not happen. No. And there's really no way I can make that happen. Mm -mm. No matter how much quality, in fact, they may so much hate the quality time we spend (laughs) That they go, because of that game night. Remember that game night? Well, you loved some game nights growing up, right? Yeah, exactly. Because of that, we'll never spend time together. (laughs) But the reason I want them to is because the purpose, one of the purposes that God puts us in families is, once again, for the purpose of the family. It's for me as the individual to learn, I belong to these people, right? not these people have to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And so what often happens, and I see this a lot in families, it's been growing this way for a long time, but I feel like it's almost at a height now that what most families do, if you look at the family schedule, it is all, it is not centered around when can we as a family be together. It's how can we fit little points of connection in as I'm taking this individual kid to their activity and this kid to their activity and this. And I, as the parent, am connecting with this kid in the car as we go. Which is great. Which is all good, and I'm not taking any of that away. What I'm saying is there is no time for that kid. What that kid's experience of life is, what's important is I get to have a relationship with my mom or dad while I go and do my individual thing, learn my skill, develop myself as a person. And it doesn't matter that I never sat down for dinner and had to learn how to put up with my annoying brother kicking me under the table and deal with that. Or we're all going to sit down and watch TV together because I'm so exhausted when I get home. I just want to go turn the TV on in my room, watch the show I like, not share the remote. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many 
great moments in your house growing up were fighting over the remote. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm fighting over, are we going to watch Family Matters or Full House? <laughs> Or I was always a Family Matters or guy. Or Mr. Belvedere. Or Mr. Belvedere. But you know what I'm doing? Yeah. Am I making sense? Oh, on yeah, that? absolutely. I mean, just being, it's, it's sort of like the same thing of playing outside. You go outside oh, and yes. you imagine, the kids imagine and create these situations and scenarios. And, and that's so essential and so important that that's happening. So it's just that downtime. You're all around each other without other distractions. And, mm -hmm. and, you, it might not be built on some activity or experience or whatever. It's mm -hmm. just time that's dedicated to being around each other. It makes total sense to me. Um, yeah. I also have somebody I know in my life and they have three children and mm -hmm. both of the older children are very involved in sports. Mm -hmm. And so what's happened in their family is the one child who's going 15 different directions mm -hmm. to all their sporting events with one parent. The other child is going... 15 directions this way and the third child she doesn't have a thing mm. and she's dying for either a thing or a thing. time with them mm. she just wants time with them she sees she's tried a lot of as things connection. she's tried a lot of things and none of she doesn't want any of them because mm -hmm. what she really wants is to be all around each other that's right. And they're figuring out, oh, how do we now fit like how do we now focus on this as a family? That's right. And it comes down to those times when they're just hanging around at the house together, the very few that they have, mm. that's when it is her thing. Mm. You know, that's what she wants. She just wants, and it doesn't become about her. Mm -hmm. It's about the family, and that's what's fulfilling to her. I would say what we're looking for, once again, to get very practical, the idea is ultimately you need to have time regularly. And depending on the age of your kid, the younger they are, the more frequent that regularity needs to be, right? Of, I'll say this, deviceless, mm -hmm. uh, com complete, um, I'm trying to think of a, I was trying to think of a very clever way this. to say this. Everybody's just turned inward toward each other. That's a good way to say it. A time where we're all doing the same activity together right. without a device. So this includes, and this is why we actually started the Family Movie Night podcast. Mm -hmm. Because when we, when I started talking to Sawyer and Donnie about it, uh, both of them said there aren't any parent parents are going to watch want to watch TV shows because they're quicker because and they're shorter. They're shorter yeah. That's what everyone's doing. And I said, but don't you think it is so critical in this age where we can't get many families to sit around a table and have a meal together? If they could all just decide, we're all going to turn off not the TV in the kids' room, not the tablet while they're sitting there and watching a show. It's we all sit and watch the same movie, laugh at the same jokes, mm -hmm. learn the same lesson, whatever the thing is, right? Cry at the same moment. There is a moment of connection that happens when we're all doing the same activity. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say family movie nights, family game nights, mm -hmm. a, uh, a meal around the table. My husband always talks so fondly about when he was growing up you know, Friday night, the TV was different, right? It had, it was less streaming and things like that. So if you missed it at a certain That's time, right. you missed it or you had to, you know, record it or whatever. Yes. <laughs> and they, every Friday night, it was pizza, picnic on the living room floor with a, with a TV show. And then if there was time, they might play a game, but that was it. And he, well, that was, when... was the one night a week they got Coke. Oh, and wow. it was a big thing. And so sometimes then it'd be like on Fridays. Because <laughs> he's so nostalgic totally for it. it. Yes, exactly. Well, and the name of the series, Family Matters, I believe Family Matters was, if not, it was a precursor to ABC's TGIF, right? Yes. The TGIF with like Boy Meets That's World and Full House that, and Step yes. by Step and all those great family TV shows where you would sit around together. And my wife and I were actually talking about that because one of our family togetherness is we always end the night together. Our kids do get tablet time, so we're not oh, anti tablet yeah, we time people. But the end of our night every night is we all sit down and watch the same TV show together, mm -hmm. right? And so we're always looking. Blackish was this show for us. So often <coughs> it was a show about a family mm -hmm. that loved being together. And we were talking, there aren't a lot of sitcoms anymore that are just about families being together. And we were talking, you know, is that the breakdown of the family? Is, oh, that, gosh, the, yes. is that the changing family? It's none of those. I'll tell you why it is. 
it's because shows like Boy Meets World, mm -hmm. uh, shows like Family Matters, they had to have a character from every demographic. That's why you always had to have like a young, a young cute kid, mm -hmm. right? A teenage kid that was kind of cool, mm -hmm. a kid that was in like middle school. An old grandparent or an somebody old grandparent. That was in because the idea was we got to have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, now what has happened with TV shows is TV shows are incredibly niche. Right, this show, we are trying to reach single dudes in their 20s with this TV show, right? Mm -hmm. And because they know no one's just sitting around as a family watching no, TV anymore. No, people don't just sit down around and flip channels either. No, it's my kid watches Yo Gabba Gabba on, on a tablet while another, another person watches their show on the TV and, you know, the husband's watching YouTube on their phone or, mm -hmm. you know, on the computer or whatever. So to say, hey, what really matters is not the individual, mm -hmm. but just we're going to be together as a family. I think this is critical. I think so, too. And the only way it happens is if you intentionally make it happen. It can't be just this fly-by thing like, oh, hey, we all happen to be home tonight? Oh, yes. okay. It has to be something that you put in place and more often than not look forward to it. Yes. <laughs> and... Um, you know, it might take a little bit to get it going. Mm -hmm. It might. It might just be a matter of saying, you know, let's just start doing this. And if you're the parent that schedules stuff, make sure to make that's a, that's a scheduled item for you. So that way it happens. Because otherwise, if you don't plan for it, yes, as busy as everybody is, it's probably not going to happen. So it could look like a certain meal mm -hmm. every week. It could look like a certain meal every day. It could look like this TV time, it could look like game time. It could look like we all are reading the same book. I mean, oh, I don't yeah, know. It, it could just be depends anything. On, and it's this is where you could get into what's your kid's thing, right? It I would could say, be a family. It could be family playing basketball outside. Here's together. one thing I'd say it could be. It could be that we as a family are all going to go to ball practice. If you have one kid that's, I remember getting dragged to my, my older brother's ball practice or whatever and oh my oh, lord sure. it bothered me i was like this is the worst why and i was old enough that i could have stayed home but it was like why am i going but afterwards we'd all go to dinner together or we'd all do something or we'd all be in the car together and we didn't have devices so we all had to sit and fight over what radio station we were going to oh, yeah. listen to That's the best part <laughs> yes but all of that is an important part and i get it as a parent because you're so busy because you're so uh, you've got a lot of things you want to get done and you're tired at the end of the day. I get, my wife and I say other time, I get why every car I drive by, there are kids sitting on tablets in the car because my, I have four kids and they are louder than me. Somehow they are, I don't know how that happened. They're all louder than wow. me. And they're in the car and it's loud and they're being crass and they're making dumb jokes yes. or they're fighting about stupid things. And I go, if I could just give them a tablet. They just stop. Or if I could just turn a movie on in the back and just let them talk. And I'm not saying we don't ever do those things. When we go on road trips, that movie There's is time essential. time and a place, yes. But when we're just riding from one place to another, allowing that to happen, the stupid fights they have, that is a different kind of skill development. Right. And it's all these things are points of connection. And so you want these things to happen. You want the, that you want the points of connection to happen. You just, it's really essential that the points of connection happen collectively at times too because yes without that then everybody's fragmented and going different directions and so when you talk about becoming part of the community of Jesus and the community of the church it you don't want it fragmented so don't model it in a fragmented way yes and I think in particular what your kids will learn and what we're hoping will happen and we're going to talk next week more about how then it goes to the next level is you want them to learn those skills of what is it to do life with other people and people I didn't necessarily choose because mm -hmm. at some point your kids are going to learn. I would not be friends with my brother or my right. sister if we were not related to one. They get on my nerves. They've hurt me. They, the, the meanest things people have ever said to me came from one of my siblings. Uh, you know I what I mean? Like from yes. my siblings, the things they said yes. to me. But at the same time, I can do them too. My, my wife always says it's, she grew up with just a, a brother and he was four years older. They didn't spend a lot of time like mm -hmm. together. They just kind of went off and did their own thing. My kids are together all the time. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it is so weird to me that they will say the nastiest things to one another and two minutes later go, you want to go braid each other's hair? <laughs> like, she's like, how? I said, because they're sisters. They're sisters. They realize I can't exist in this relationship mm -hmm. if the whole point of it is I get exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to model for our kids. And so that's why I always say, 
not having TVs in their rooms or saying, hey, you can have a TV in your room, but there are going to be times we're all together as a family and you're just forced to watch whatever the, the little sister wants to watch. Or the, and you're going to hate it and you're going to want to complain about it. And you're going to want to do this, but we're a family and they're a part of it, so they get to choose. And sometimes dad gets to control the remote and so you're just going to have to watch whatever boring thing I want to watch or find something else, but we're going to be together. And the, once again, the goal is not so that when they're adults, they want to come and be no, with me. That's that, a that part they of it. they want to have game night again. That's right. And hopefully, that is, that is man, that is my hope. I hope that mm -hmm. happens. The goal is I want them to learn your life is not about you. Right. And ultimately, when they get into a church family, I want them to know when they're in a small group with someone and someone says something mean and nasty that offends them, they don't go, you know what? I can do this Jesus thing on my own. Right. What they think is, well, it's impossible to do this Jesus thing on my own. And I've already invested a lot of time in these people. So I better figure it out. Yes. We better work that out. Because otherwise I'm going to have to figure it out somewhere else. And, and I'm going to make that choice to love that person and figure it out. And that, it begins by being modeled in the home. So mm -hmm. find some time this week. Yep, that's or over your the homework. Weeks. We're back to homework. That's right. <laughs> but it's good. I mean, just start putting that into here. It's the beginning of the new year. This can be your new family thing. Yeah, we're going to have family meals. We're going to have a bunch of this stuff. We're going to say, yeah, this year we're going to give you a bunch of different ideas of how to do things. And this is the first one. So Family meal, family game time. And like we said, if you've got time, teenagers, it, is. it may not be every single day that this is possible, but find a interval where it works. Say every every Saturday we get together for lunch. And every Sunday have after to church be we have a meal. Long periods of time. No. It could just be small, short periods of time. Yes. I tell people breakfast is actually a really good time. It's good. It's almost the only time of day you guys are getting out of the house at the same time. That's great. And I think anything that you find that you say. You don't get to do something else during this time. If you have a ball game during this time, sorry, this is when we're doing it. Or we're going to all reschedule it and you can't go hang out with your friends because you're going to do this instead. Mm -hmm. Like we say, it's not about your individual development. Mm -hmm. And you may be, you can show up and be miserable and pouty as all get out because I don't care. You being here pouty is better than you being somewhere else happy. Exactly. <laughs> I want you to be miserable. <laughs> if you, it, well, you being miserable. Being with me is better than you deciding I because I want to be happy mm -hmm. and be my authentic self. And that goes for us parents too. Yes. Because there's lots of times where I'm every like, game I would night really I go love to go do something else right now. Why are we doing this? You, yes. <laughs> why are we doing this? Why are we here? Night? Why are we doing this? <laughs> but I sit down and by the end of it, even if I don't go, that was worth it, I do get to the end of it and I go, something did happen. Yes, something that was going to happen. Something happened. And this was, this. that's important. So, yeah. well, good luck with that. We yeah. know, I mean, it's really important. And we know everybody can figure it, you know, figure out some way to do that. And it's just a great foundational thing to put in your family. So, uh, we will be back next week with more Family Matters. Yes. Yes. So, we'll, we will, uh, have a different version of this same yeah. topic but um we want to hear from you i know i mentioned at the beginning but there is a link in the show notes and so feel free to send us questions thoughts we will even take death threats oh i was saying we're just like hello oh okay sorry but yeah nathan would like some death no threats. i you said we would even take and even i said i'll just take. a hi i just want to hear from you as long as you show up to the family meal you can yes. even bring a death threat yeah just let us know how it's going. Yes. Uh, if you need some ideas, whatever, we would be happy to provide some more. So um, have a not great yes. parenting journey this week. And I um, hope you guys have a great day. And thanks for being with us. Take care. Yeah.